What's up, y'all? Alan checking in on a Thursday, Thursday afternoon. Got a special treat for you. We're heading out in the old uh, Cummins Ram here. 2018, 2500. And uh, like I said, if you guys watched the last video a couple days ago, um, I was serious about uh, letting you guys modify my truck. So basically the winning thing or the most, I guess the most common theme um, while we start this thing up in terms of what people wanted to see, I would say probably is the tune. So, you know, delete and tune, tune, whatever. So what we're gonna do is head up to a place uh, quite a ways from here. It's actually further than Adams. Um, kind of out in the country in Illinois called, uh, the town's called Marengo, Illinois. And I think it's called Power Calibrated Solutions. I'll put it up on the screen just in case I get it wrong. But uh, basically, Got a guy up there, Tim, who I met through Adam. He had a bunch of fast Jeeps with turbos on them and, and the Evos and stuff like that. GTR, R35, things of that nature. Um, and trucks as well is now working over there as one of the dyno tuners. Um, so they do Duramax, Power Stroke, uh, and Cummins. So gonna go up there, he's gonna give us a tour of the shop um, and then talk to us about what kind of options we have um, with, with the Ram here in terms of getting it tuned. So. Um, like I said, it's a pretty far drive up there, so uh, yeah, it's probably gonna take me about an hour, so I gotta get gas in this thing too, it looks like, so we'll see when we get up there and uh, talk to Tim. Peace. Nice. Oh wow, that is so cool. What's up guys? That is so sick. So they're doing a Duramax in that then? We're doing a Duramax in that. That's becoming pretty popular, I've seen online, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that one, the, the goal is to make about 800 with that. So wow, so, okay. Um, it's gonna get a mild built motor, uh, built trans, our Stealth 67 turbo. Okay. The works. Yeah, this thing is, I mean, obviously insane. Yeah, this is, this is Nick's Apache. This is Nick's Apache, this is his baby. Um, wow. Makes like 799 to the rear wheel. Like, Jesus, and that much right torque. Right at 800 miles. Um, and a ton of torque, right? He originally built it, um, more or less just like his dream truck and yeah um, he dirt drags with it now okay so that's the one i pulled out to Coeur d'Alene, idaho for the hunting yeah game. yeah yeah. i remember that this thing is that much power in that chassis is a riot wow that is crazy i love the plate too <laughs> <laughs> and the color of the paint job sick yeah so what year is this thing the hummer the h1 like 96 i believe this one Nice, it's clean, huh? Yeah, it's a really clean, clean truck. We bought it with with the uh, 6.2, or the, I'm sorry, the NA 6.5 yeah. liter, and it um, had a blown motor, was smoking. We what years did these come factory diesel? It's just a couple of years you could get the the Duramax and on GM. Oh, like the, the Duramax was like 07. Last couple of years up, they had yeah, them. Yeah, like 07, 08. Okay. It was only a year or two. Yeah. They're pretty expensive. They were around 110 grand, and now yeah. they're around 150. 180. Yeah, I believe it. So a lot of guys can get the gas motors like this yeah. one, and then swap them. So we've done. Um, Durbur obviously does a lot of them. There's a yeah. couple companies out there. We we tuned one for a, a dealer of ours. Um, the guys had it done. It's a military spec one. Okay. And that one was just up here a month or two ago. Sweet. Um, there's definitely a market for them. You know, because you can pick one of these up for. 30 to 50, yeah. spend 30 on it, and you, yeah. got, you know, you're ahead of the game. You Pretty know? badass off-road so, machine too, right? Yeah, exactly. So this one's getting the long travel suspension. I don't know all the specs on it. Yeah. I just know it's, he's going pretty crazy with it. Sure. Um, this is obviously our Not. 17 L5P test mule. Okay. Um, just gets the shit kicked out of it. Doing some operating system testing and, and on the 18 and 19. And stuff nice. Like that. So is this still a stock motor and transmission, this one? Yeah, yeah, nice. 100%. This is. Uh, essentially a tune only 560 rear wheel horsepower truck. So it's still emissions equipped? Wow. Yep, 100% compliant. We won't touch anything that's uh, deleted. Really? So, yeah. Um, EPAs <laughs> come down hard. I was um, going to say. Nick's kind of been like on the forefront of the, the mm -hmm. clean diesel and, and no delete stuff. Um, they've probably for four or five years now, they've They've stayed away that's from awesome. It. That's good to hear. This truck, so yeah, what do you got over here? The one that's all stickered up, like a show the, truck or something. Uh, the, extra Jeep truck. Um, the what truck? I'm sorry, Tim. Extra G Performance. They do a lot of okay. injectors and fuel stuff. Um, okay. This For like diesel applications. Exactly. This is a hundred percent a competition truck. Um, nice. So sort of like injector dynamics in the diesel world, basically. Exactly. So this thing's yeah. got a, a 
very gnarly setup. It, it'll make around 1,300 wheel. Holy um, smokes, dude. We're basically getting it to full fuel past 4,000 RPM. Right uh -huh. now, on your average calibration, it's going to start pulling fuel around like 36, 3,800, okay. and you're yeah. going to lose rail and stuff like that. So basically, they want this truck in a, in a sled pull application. That's what it's used for? Okay. They want they want the truck to make all the power, you know, Damn. all the RPM. So. And they'll put that down to four wheels, no problem? Yeah, yeah. So this truck I've actually run on the dyno in four wheel drive. That's sweet. So. It well, looks it's like it's so scary your first time coming from like an Eagle. I bet. Like yeah, I just the torque has to scare the crap out of you. Yeah. And it just hits so soon. I can exactly. only, I've never even ridden in anything close to what these guys got here, so I can only imagine. So it's like to hopefully take a ride in, yeah. in yeah, one of those, the black one at least, I'll yeah. Then, um, you know, yeah, it was like Tesla. Um, this is uh, an employee truck. Okay. Um, so what is this the compound turbo setup, Tim? Over here, the red one. Yeah, was that a compound that turbo? Compound so how big? So I mean, these guys know how big turbos are. How, how big are the turbos that they use in a compound I mean, setup? That one's like a sixty. I, I don't know the exact turbo. Setup, yeah, but roughly. But it's probably like a sixty-nine in the valley. Sixty-nine millimeter, right? Either like one hundred and four or one hundred and fourteen is the big one on that. And the big ones for the top end, obviously, yeah, right? Okay. Sucking all the air. So it's kind of like twin charging back in the day. The, no, I mean, the, it's, 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 a twin, same, it's a same twin same idea. Turbo. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a twin turbo setup. Okay. So, it, but That's it, all it is, really. The compound is you're building the air off of each other versus okay. two separate. Yeah. You know, they're working with each other. You know? Yeah, yeah. It makes sense. Cool. Um, Comments. Finally, it's better. You're worrying me with all this Duramax stuff. <laughs> Whoa, dude. Holy smokes. We our UCC truck. Like... What is UCC? I don't know what that is. Challenge. Okay. Big diesel, big diesel thing. Um, basically, gives the more or less it's for shops and to give bra bragging rights on. Okay. It, it's there's a dyno, um, a drag race, and a sled pull. I believe is is the three big things they do. Sure. You, it's off a point scale, and they average whatever the point scale is to get the winning truck. Okay. Um, I think Firefox won like the last two or three years. Now. Okay. Um, so this truck never actually has made it to a UCC. Um, Not yet. It's, it, they call it the curse sometimes. They, you know, there's, there's, there's different things going on. It's, it's actually got the, the Cummins truck motor in it. Okay. We bored out. Uh, right now it's right around a 10 liter compared to the, you know, 6.7 that was wow. originally in here. Um, it's Jeez. got triples, it's got three S500s. Um, really custom fab did most of the stuff on it as far as the turbo kit and stuff like that. This is crazy. Wow, that's, that's gotta be so complicated. Yeah. Just to get um, something like this up and all your water, there's yeah. a full cage in there. Um, they, it's a single cab. They had the bed length in 10 feet. Wow. Let's see. Yep. Dude, this is crazy. I don't really get the whole doing this to trucks. Yeah. It's, it's different, but uh, yeah. I mean, this truck, we had it on the dyno once and it, it made, it, it, the first stock motor, um, truck motor in it made like 3,200 foot pounds of torque when the rods let go. I mean, God this, dang. this truck means business, you know? Yeah. UCC is pretty much a bragging rights competition. Yes, who's got the biggest dick? So, um, so you guys primarily do. I saw you buy a new Power Stroke, a 19. You advertise a 19 yeah. Power Stroke. So, yeah. do you do mostly Duramax and Cummins then at this point? Or are you starting to get into Power uh, Stroke we've been as well? Doing power Stroke for almost two years now. Okay. What do you guys prefer? What's your favorite application? I mean, you started with Duramaxes, but they're all good now. The big thing yeah. they're all they're all solid. Yeah, I think the only downfall is the the, the transmissions in mine, but the 60. I mean, it's still a 500 wheel horsepower truck. You know. Yeah. That's 500 wheel horsepower. The Elmel's 550. You know, the Ford's 570. So, so it's like, all, they're all, they're all pretty, same pretty same. So what do you have to do? You just have to do things that to, in terms of trying to make the stock transmission last. I saw guys um, do something with like line pressure yeah, and to do, to do getting the, more. The King, our King tunes essentially to take it over 500 wheel horsepower. Yeah. Um, you can do a valve body mod. You can do a line pressure mod. Okay. Um, trans tuning's big thing. Yeah, I've heard that too. It'll help extend the life of it, right? Um, with that Dodge. We'll take you first spin in the single turbo one. Is, it's a stock trans with a, a basic valve body and our King Tunes. And they, okay. Uh, we've been testing some like second gear lockup and stuff with it. I mean, the truck doesn't have any problems. Nice. That's good to hear. It's awesome to hear. 
All right, cool. So what do you think's next, Timmy? What, what are uh, we gonna do is next? Kind of my play land in here. Yeah, I was gonna say, what have you been doing? Oh, oh. super cool, dino time. Loud in here, so we'll have to speak up. Okay. But, um, well, wow, so this is obviously, is this uh, Adam's dino? No. So this it's is the same, same model or similar model? Yeah. Okay. So we're talking about Adam that works on the Evo. Yeah, I was gonna say it's yeah. wider, right? That's more real, it's wider. Yeah. Our dyno at Adams only had three, uh, one eddy brake. This one's got three. Okay. Nice. So I saw you guys ripping around the parking lot in this thing. What's the story with this thing? These are rocks or, um, so these are based off like the 50s Willys Jeep. Yeah. Um, it's a two and a half liter turbo diesel. Okay. We just started getting into them. It's a four wheel drive Jeep essentially. Uh, they're sold here in the US now. They're about 16 grand. Okay. Kind of fun, I bet. Uh, yeah, so we just yeah. got into those. We actually more than doubled the horsepower on these. Nice. So. Nice, man. Well, cool. Yeah. Nice. So this is just, Tim's doing basically uh, calibrating of the computers and transmissions too, Tim, or no? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mostly, that's mostly what he's the, doing. The, uh, I guess like the R&D side of it, running it on the dyno, stuff like that. Yeah. Nice. So you guys are basically, what are we doing in here? Cleaning, uh, cleaning them? Yeah. Okay. Cleaning them, getting them ready for assembly, right, Tom? After, yeah, after they get machined our specs okay oh, nice doing? and so you guys do i notice garrett ihi all kinds of stuff yeah, then huh comments. this is all garrett that's all i hi what do i have in mind sam in my comments that would be the, the garrett, right? my the garrett at 18 comments 6.7 18 yeah yeah garrett yeah okay cool i was just curious I, Cummins is new to me it's a new platform to me well I, nice i've been a duramax guy my, my entire life so yeah. Um, like the new Duramax is the L5Ps are all board stuff, which is which is. That's cool. Board, so, yeah. Um, they get away from gear. So. Yeah. Um, so this is the the turbo bay we call it. Um, these are all clean turbos ready to get assembled. Cell 67, cell 64s. They get assembled right here. We got four CNC machines going. Our machinists. Um, nice mini paint booth in here. So literally everything's done in house. Yeah, you aren't everything's kidding. done in house. Yeah. So. That's cool. So did this place primarily started out as a tuning company or a turbo company, yeah, or what were they? Nick started tuning Duramaxes out of his basement about 11 years ago. Is that how it's, so DuramaxTuner.com? Exactly. And it was okay. Cummins Tuner. Um, had to change the Cummins Tuner name to Calibrated Power. Gotcha. Um, Calibrated Power kind of absorbed everything yeah. as far as Power Stroke, Rock or you know, yeah. not just specific to anything anymore. For sure. Well, that's awesome, man. We really, really appreciate you taking us on this tour. I mean, it's fucking yeah. sick and seeing seeing the setup so let's go uh, let's go talk to tim and his boss and uh take a ride in one of the cars and see what we can do to my my white truck out here in terms of uh, tuning it and i'm pretty pumped because we get to keep the emissions equipment so i was curious to yeah to, to, to see if we we're going to do that or not but that's good to hear tim's able yeah, to do that drive it, see how it goes, you know? yeah exactly all right y'all so this is a 16 uh just like man comments 2500 it's got those dirt tracks that I want on it, but uh, yeah, let's, let's go take a ride in this thing. So you said it's tuned with an exhaust, but it still has all the emissions equipment. This is 100% stock truck uh, with just a tune. Just so a tune. No okay, cool. Nothing like that. Does it sound different out of curiosity? Not really. No. Yeah? Okay. Cool. Um, maybe maybe a little bit of a different injector noise based yeah. based to tune on idle. So yeah. This is this truck was bought just for sole purpose of testing. Um, this is the valve body mod. Okay, so it's essentially stock truck. Stock truck tune with a valve body, right? Exactly. Okay, cool. So really minimal stuff, guys, honestly. Yeah. So, this has got, what, 32,000 miles on it? Yes, 32,000. So it's, and how long has it been tuned, would you say, mileage-wise, Timmy? Probably only, this one's probably only 5,000. Okay. Um, if you, when you get in Chris's truck, yeah. um, that one's the one with the compounds on it now. Um, nice. That was Nick, the owner's original truck before Chris bought it. Okay. Um, that truck's got 55 or 60,000 miles on it now. It's been tuned since day one. Nice. nice. Looks like we got a nice wide open road here. Oh, it's gonna be in trouble, but we still going. Yeah. Damn, dude. Yeah, it doesn't, it's not violent. It's just super stock and smooth, yeah. yeah. I don't know, I'll show you the speedometer, but uh, it was fast and it was, yeah, just like stock, he's right. Super, just don't after much. Doesn't no, no, no. Yeah. no drama, no smell, no yeah. smoke, no nothing really. And the other thing is too, guys, um, with me towing the Evo all over the country next year, if this thing happens to break down and I need to bring it to, you know, a Dodge dealer or a Ram dealer, I mean, if the truck doesn't have emissions equipment, they're not going to work on it, yeah. more than likely. 
Um, and where you see in the future, I mean, you mentioned you might have this car for two, truck for two or three years. Yeah, exactly. You, I can easily trade it in at the dealer and exactly. just take the flash off. Exactly. It. And then we still got all the emissions equipment, and then basically, you know, I can just upgrade to the newest model. You know, so I think that sounds good to me too. So EFI Live is what we're thinking. Here we go again. Yeah, EFI Live. God, this thing pulls fucking good. Yeah, yeah. It's, it literally, it's it's strong, guys. I'm not lying. So it's, Chris's truck, the compliant, yeah, the twin compound, whatever. You I bet that thing's insane. Um, Especially I told cold. my, I went and got my 40 foot gooseneck with it. Just, nice. You know, most of these trucks, this truck, yeah. we didn't order, we did buy it new, so uh -huh. it doesn't have the gooseneck. Which mine does, by the way, which is pretty cool. So anything we test usually gets a gooseneck hooked up to it, and mm -hmm. you know, we're going to put it through more than you're going to put it through in testing. Cool, time, nice. You know? There's the old Ram over here. We just got done taking a ride in the black one over there, which had, what kind of setup, computer-wise and software? Uh, that's just a stock uh, yeah. 36,000 mile emissions equipped truck. Uh, Sweet. It has our beta testing EFI Live setup in it. Okay. Uh, so there's some test files in that truck currently. Okay, and you were just telling me that you recommended an MM3 over the EFI Live. For defending... For for wiring reasons and, for and whatnot. For a couple reasons. Sure. Uh, the newer trucks, uh, guys that are looking to retain like a warranty, yep. uh, someone who is looking for a little bit more of a simplistic flashing exactly. of different files. Um, MM3 holds a lot of value. EFI Live software holds a lot of value. Okay. So different customers sure. are going to probably be better off with certain products. Yeah, and I think for me, just being that the truck is, you know, so new at this point, I just bought it, you know, a few months ago. I think we're going to go with uh, with the MM3 just for the reason that I want to hack it up. And I would have to say that's probably the best option. Okay. You know, the Sweet. it's literally a brand new truck. Brand new. So, yeah. you know, you get a recall or you need to take it in for service. Within five minutes, the truck's flash back to stock. That's awesome. You go about your business, you get the truck out of the shop, you flash the file back in and away you go. Perfect. So. Yeah, that sounds like what we're going to do then. So that's what, uh, and right now we're taking a look at another truck right here. Yeah, so this is my what? personal. Uh, it's a it's 2015 beautiful. Cummins. Nice. Uh, missions equipped, uh, 650 horse, twin turbo, built trans. 600, wow, yeah. to the wheels, wow. So uh, it gets the job done. Does is this a 2500 like mine or a 3500? No, this is a 2500. So it does have that 68 RFE. It has a 68 with a built trans. Okay, so, uh, cool. Rev Max, we got a trans from them. It's their 700 series with uh, the upgraded uh, steel fourth gear band. Okay, how's that treated um, you so far? It's good, 20,000 trouble free miles Get on it so here. far. Nice, that's uh, awesome. I use it to tow my boat and tow my truck to, or my uh, my boat and my car to and from the track and the boat to and from the lake. So yeah, I don't know if Tim told you, but that's literally what we bought this thing for. Yep, I was yep. towing the I've, Evo uh, for next year for grid life. I've seen your car multiple times at Adams. Adam built. Like oh motor. yeah, so yeah. I have that's a, how I found. I have an 06, Okay, uh, cool. Nine with a built motor. And my man, head. dude, look so. at you. <laughs> so we are buddies. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want to drive this just because I'd like to uh, film if you don't mind. <laughs> um, yeah, I can just ride in it. I, cool. I, I, I get it. Well, let's um, get it. Yeah, let's do it. I'm I'm like super, actually super stoked. How do you like the uh, the Ram boxes? I decided not to get them. Um, yeah, do you like very, them or no? Very convenient. Yeah. Very very convenient to say the least. Yeah. Um, I can't really. I have no complaints with it. Yeah, yeah. At first, so this truck was actually the test truck for the business. Okay. Uh, the owner here, Nick, bought it new. Uh, sure. From Crystal Lake Dodge. Okay. And uh, I was completely against the Ram box. Yeah. The Ram box. Yeah. Um, I bought the truck from Nick about a year ago. Yeah. And uh, now you're I'm, into it. I'm very thankful. Yeah, yeah. my buddy who uh, hooked me up with the discount on this works at Chrysler, and the same thing. Yeah, he gets yeah. the the new work truck every year, and he's like, dude, trust me, I saw the same thing about the Ram Ram boxes, and I love them. Can't can't go without them. But oh well. Nice. So uh, this is twin turbo. So con they call it in the diesel world. I'm a car guy, yeah, but they yeah. call it compound turbo, yeah, right? So a couple differences, you know. Um, in the gas world, you know, I know like LS, I, so there's some Jeeps out there that are twin yeah. turbo too. Um, twins are two identical turbochargers and they run on one on each bank. Um, in the diesel world, whether it's a V8 and it's a Duramax or a Ford or in the Cummins world, okay. we refer to them as twins, right? Because that's just simple terminology, sure. but it's a compound. Um, and okay. What it is, is you have a smaller turbo okay. that comes to life earlier in the RPM window, so you okay. get a quicker spool, yep. and that feeds a bigger turbo, where in the compound world, it's called an atmospheric. Okay. So it feeds the bigger turbocharger. So the small turbo makes up probably a third to maybe half of the boost, okay. depending on setup, yep. and then you rely on the bigger turbocharger to make up the difference, but you don't have that lag. So does like when the, the bigger turbo kicks in, does the smaller one turn off so it's not blowing hot air? It or? doesn't okay. turn off. Uh, there's two applications for that. If sure. you have a waste gated setup, yeah. uh, which would mean you have a fixed vane turbo, so our trucks so like would the be car a world, different. Yeah. Yep, in the car world, yeah, yeah. you would have the waste gate open up at a okay. certain PSI to bypass all the excess exhaust gases sure. and drive that into the bigger one. Okay. Um, in this turbocharger setup, you have vanes. 
VGT, if you will. Okay. And those veins open and close, and that dictates spool up for the small turbo. Makes so sense. what ends up happening is, is you command the veins to a certain percentage, okay. and you allow the turbocharger to make X amount of boost, and then the exhaust gases get to travel through into the bigger turbo, creating the added boost number going makes into sense. the motor. Okay. Um, so the truck makes 55 pounds of boost. Okay. Okay. It's on a stock long block. Okay. Stock head bolts, stock valve springs, everything else is stock. So you have head studs uh, on it or no? Not? Really? No, 60, 60,809 miles. Wow. So the, a lot of guys online say you'll lift the head there's too. There's a lot of misperception out there. Interesting. And okay. one of the things that we did, I've been in the working on the test side of things with the, the guys in the tuning department and the owner, Nick, when the four gen stuff started to come about. Cause sure. there's always this crazy misperception of, uh, 450, 500 horse, six, seven liter Cummins pop head gaskets, yeah. left and right. Well, they have the same clamping capacity as a 5.9 Cummins. There's a very little difference in the gasket material and the head and the block huh. as far as the ceiling, but the studs are all the same from 98 and a half all the way through <laughs> 2019 or 2018, I should say. Wow, so 20 so, years. What you look at or what you find is, is, well, at least what we found in a lot of the tuning that was currently on the market five, six years ago where we were seeing all these premature failures, a lot of these tuners were running obscene amounts of boost pressure and an obscene amount of timing going through the motors, okay. creating a lot of cylinder heat. Yeah, makes sense to me. So yeah. that's where a lot of those issues took So place. just tuning issues. So okay. exactly. So, I mean, yes, am I on the, would I say I'm on the jagged edge? No. Uh, I think that there's still a little bit of room. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, how many miles about, did you say you have on the twin setup? Uh, on the twins? Yeah, you said uh, quite a few, I thought. 40,000 on That's the That's a twins. lot of miles, guys. So, I mean, these definitely worked out the kicks, I would say, at this point. I mean, I, I drive this truck as far as towing trailers. Nice. And, you know, what kind I've, of weight do you tow then, Nick? Um, I've towed anywhere near, anywhere from 5,000 pounds to about 18,000, wow. 17, 18,000. No problems, so, nope. reliability I've wise. I've that hooked up with two trucks on the back of it mm -hmm. and stuff like that, so. Cool. Which is music to my ears with what we're going to be doing with uh, the EVA next year in Grid Life. Like I said, I think we go as far as um, Atlanta next okay. year will be my, my furthest trip, but I do want to go in a perfect world, Willow Springs, but, yep. you know, Laguna Seca and go west if possible next year. So, Rocky Mountains up Eisenhower Tunnel and I-70 with a load. Yeah, that's, that's when you need the setup. Yeah. That's when you need the setup. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, well, that's cool. So, um, what what size did you say the turbos were? The smaller one was how many the millimeters? It was a stock turbo, I believe. Okay, they're so like it's a stock one. millimeter. Okay, cool. Um, so, stock whole set, HE351VE, VGT. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then the atmospheric is a uh, 471. I just can't get over how smooth the diesel trucks are yeah. versus like to, you know the Evo game and yeah, you know, smaller engines and rev yeah, happy. Very aggressive. <laughs> you know, I've had a bike back in the day, yep, a GSX yep. R750, that I to, you know, 16,000 RPM redline. You know? yep. So this is a very, very different type of uh, sensation. It's it's crazy to me too. You know, I came yeah. from the gas world into the diesel world yeah. and then invested all my time and efforts into the diesel. Yeah, you're into um, it. Yeah. And I had a couple high performance trucks that I got rid of and then I bought the Evo two years ago and okay. decided to do a build on that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, it's just crazy to me, you know, you get in one of these and it takes forever to rev out the 3000. You yeah. get a little four cylinder. Big, big long you know, years. <laughs> my car revs out at 9800 and I mean, yeah. it's there like that. You know? Yeah, totally the, agree. It's just, it's a different, it's a different world. It's a different platform altogether. Yeah. So cool. So uh, I think we're going to drop it off then. Uh, we're saying Nick next week, we'll have to look at his schedule, but uh, the whole process. Tim was saying it takes, you know, an hour to two hours-ish. Does that yeah, sound right? We'll, we'll be in and out in an hour. You know, okay, we'll cool. schedule something, we'll get yeah. you in. Um, like I was saying earlier about the hardware, this would be the MM3 display that we would operate yeah, the okay, truck cool. off of, so you kind of see that look. And that's that the name of the like. company, MM3? MM3 is just the custom tuning hardware and software, okay. and then we write our own calibrations from calibrated okay. power onto the device. Nice, cool. Um, but you can read and clear trouble codes. Um, I run different PIDs for transline pressure, fuel there rail pressure, boost pressure. So like in that last pull, the truck made 57 pounds of boost. Uh, I made 26,000 pounds of rail pressure. My, nice. uh, my trans pressure went up to 250 uh, PSI, mm -hmm. and we were at 100% throttle. Okay. You know? So you get to see these things when you are operating the truck yeah. to get a better understanding of what's going on. Okay, so. cool. Nice. Um, so my other question was transmission related. So. Okay. What does it cost? I don't know if I'll do it right away, but what does it cost to do the valve body and some of the, the stage one stuff that you can do to help yeah. the, the trans last longer? So, you know, in, in being in the car world, you know, everyone's always relating things to stages, right? Yeah. 
in the diesel world, I mean, it, that's just not really a thing. Okay. Uh, the reality of it is this. You start with something and you build off it as a foundation, right? Sure. So if we were to talk stages, you know, quote unquote. Yeah, yeah. Tuning is the heart and soul. Okay. These 68 transmissions uh, adopt and adapt to some tuning in uh, some of the word that I'm looking for. It needs assistance. Sure. Okay? Yeah. Um, so applying some line pressure there, applying improved shift scheduling, the quality of the shift, the transitioning in between gears. Okay. But the converter lockup process essentially is sure. what we're really, really looking at. Okay. Um, so as far as like a stage one goes, tuning. Engine and trans tuning Perfect. quality day. I could reliably take your truck at 345 wheel horsepower, mm -hmm. tune it, be 460 rear wheel horsepower, nice. play with around 950 foot pounds of torque, Sweet. and it's just a nice operating truck. And that's to the wheels on a to Mustang. To the rear tire dyno. on our Mustang Dyno. And yeah, once again, Mustang Dynos guys read historically lower yes. than a Dyno Jet. Yes, yes, yes. Dyno Pack and, and all that other stuff. And then you have our Dyno. Our Dyno, I feel, we feel is a little calibrated uh, against the end user. Okay. Um, we've had vehicles on our dyno we, we'd rather be lower than higher so it's like a like an ams heartbreaker dyno yeah, that's the mustang we, yeah. a lot of, literally people call our dyno the heartbreaker yeah. for that reason so. a lot of a lot of the mustang dynos get called that if in my opinion if they're calibrated correctly yeah. you know because they, they play with the calibration in those as well yeah, but. if you go make 500 wheel horsepower on a mustang dyno on a respectable mustang dyno you're probably good for a, a 50 to 80 horsepower yeah on a at least dyno 50 jet. right yeah. yeah so cool um that would be the step one to do a step two, you know, now you're talking, you want to make north of 500 wheel. Yeah, exactly. You want to tap out what the factory turbocharger's capabilities are. Yep. Uh, so now you're talking a valve body. Um, RevMax, the, one of the companies, mm -hmm. uh, that's the transmission that's in this truck. They offer a really nice valve body. They're like 700 bucks. Okay, cool. And that allows us to maintain higher uh, line pressure. Line pressure, right. Okay. And on a stock converter, we'd like to see, you know, 200, maybe 220, somewhere in that ballpark. Okay. Uh, but that's enough line pressure to support 525, 30 wheel. Okay, perfect. Um, and what's the valve body? Consist of labor wise. Are you dropping the trans or is it something that's bolted onto drop the trans? Drop the pan, drop the okay, valve so body, and bolt on. Yeah, a couple okay. hours in and out. You know, okay. it's a DIY. So pan service sure. and yep. throw it in there and new fluid and yep. all that. And then, uh, you know, we leave it at that. In all honesty, these trucks from fi uh, 460 to 520, I, I really don't notice much of a difference. Okay. So if you're going to do the valve body setup, I would say you're doing it as a foundation to set up for the next. Yeah, thing. to go with a bigger turbo. And or if something. you're going to do that, you got to do something with the converter. So okay. now you're talking a twelve hundred dollar, thirteen hundred dollar yeah. badass triple disc converter. Um, so you might as well just build the trans at that point, well, right? Just do it they're all expensive. Once. They're, are they? I mean, to this, these transes are eight nine thousand dollars. Are they for a build one? So yeah. you know, you could get away. This truck for the first thirty thousand miles of its life was sitting at anywhere from five hundred and fifty to six hundred and fifty horse, mm -hmm. um, and that was a stock trans with just a valve body and uh, the torque converter. Nice. And with this was the test truck for the tuning. So yeah, I mean, it's saying, got 60, there was a lot miles of files goes. that have been ran through this truck. Yeah. Um, so I would be very confident that if you wanted to make like 550 wheel horsepower, sure. maybe close to the six number, we could do a converter, we could do a valve body. Okay, and it cool. depends on how you use the truck. If you're drag racing it, no, it's probably not gonna last. No, nah, I'm honestly just but, gonna be. you know, for what you're using the yeah, truck. Yeah, tow on and I just like to go a little bit faster than I'm going. I would say going, yeah. converter, valve body, okay. set up that foundation, and then we look at turbos. Uh, I really, I love the Cummins engine too, where you do the top mounts like a super, yes, you know, like yes, it's so yes. fucking sexy. So there's a couple things that we yeah. have in the in the pipeline here. Okay, cool. I wanna speak out of turn but we have yeah. a, a single drop in turbo that's we're working on okay um i will actually be ripping the compounds out of this and selling them okay putting on our new test turbo that we have in the works okay um and seeing what that looks like see how so, that operates so what's the whole idea there to get something that spools similar to a compound setup without so the two turbos or our what, company what? we have a, what's called a stealth line of turbochargers yeah okay? i saw that in your show and, uh, the stealth line of turbochargers represents drop and replacement stock appearing turbos okay so uh in the gas world kind of like the fp stuff right yeah, Ford yeah, performance yeah for stuff. sure so all the stock uh, frame stock yep, location yep, yep. whatever they call so, it so yeah. uh you know in, in the reason to utilize stock appearing stuff there's a couple things generally the oe uses tight exhaust housings which is going to offer quicker spool up mm -hmm. okay um it's also going to offer better fitment as it is a drop and replacement okay um and it's stock appearing you know you yeah. drop the hood it looks sleeper yeah. so uh the idea here is is something that we can offer as a simplistic upgrade where you're not running two turbochargers okay we'll pop the hood when we get to the shop yeah i mean there's a lot of things going on here I just to imagine. get to my oil filter on this <laughs> it's a little bit of a hassle but uh you know it, it yeah. makes up the difference when you're driving it you know yeah it was, it's a beast so, y'all it's a beast so yeah we have
have that going on. I'm really excited. We should start having some prototypes here within the next month or two. Nice. And uh, start so do you guys, not to put you on the spot or anything, but do you guys look for beta customers? We for really, something like that or you just do it in-house because everybody's got trucks probably we try to do everything as much as we can in-house because what yeah, it does is it figured. controls what's going on in the outcome well, yeah and everybody you know talks what? we're not yeah. the most I mean, i'll be honest with you when we do something for the first time there's not a i mean you got to be confident you got to believe in yourself but yeah you know if we're going to break something or something's going to fail let it be on our, our stuff, truck not, a not on someone truck. else's so. yeah or a test you know but yeah here we'll pop the hood on this yeah sweet the thanks for the ride this is oh, awesome God, my pleasure Super cool. So curi I'm curious, I don't know if it's just mine as the stupid stock tires, but are these bigger than the? Yep, these are uh, 34 inch. Because that makes that makes because this is a 342 gear in this, right? Because mm -hmm. that everybody's shitting on that too, saying you can't have oversized tires with the, the uh, trans tuning. You have to do trans yeah. tuning. You have to manipulate this shift scheduling and the yeah. converter lockup. Uh, in the summertime, I, I have like a I run a street tire, a Nitto 420 nice. on a 20 by 10. So it's like a 32 inch tall tire, so a little yeah. shorter. Um, I prefer the way the truck drives and its characteristics with a little bit bigger tire and all yeah, honesty. Yeah. But uh, nonetheless, pretty, yeah. you know, drives well. For so. sure. All right, so let's but take yeah. a look here. So I mean, it's stock. It, it still looks fairly stock. We're running the factory air box. Uh, no limitation there. So when you yep. see the guys on the forums, you know, saying, hey, we need a different intake. You need to do an S and B, this and that. Yeah, that bank thing over there. That thing, yeah. that ram horn thing. Stock like. airbox, S400, 650 wheel horsepower, dyno proven. That's awesome. The reminder hasn't been pulled down. It's very sufficient in its uh, in its breathing capacity. So super cool. Yeah. I mean, this is I, I just I don't know. Being a super guy and an import guy curling hey, up, I, dude, I can't wait to get a single turbo I, like that's just like yeah. boom right in your face, you know. I, mean, I want a super, just have a super. So yeah, me too. Um, what do you think of the new one before uh, we go here? I think uh, I think it'll warm up to me. Um, Did you I, see it in the graphite gray? That kind of matte that's gray. That's gorgeous. That, dude, that gray it makes the car. Yeah, that like the rear, the, the, the rear fenders and the shit. Gray makes the car. The other colors it's, aren't doing it. I want to see what it looks like in person. Me too. Are one thing. White was okay. Person. It was okay. The yeah. red. I keep seeing a bunch of red. Red not down do with the red yeah. but uh there was some speculation that i read that they're coming out with a four-cylinder version as well that will uh adopt uh, or uh, manual take on a 2jz motor uh, really easily. so you know i was uh adam from ad yeah. motors uh, uh, we were talking about you know another build that i wanted to do um keep the evo of course yeah. it's not going anywhere but uh you know we were talking if i could find like a super roller like an old one mm -hmm. get a jdm you know two did you see motor. my motor over there for the mr2 no i haven't i haven't been to adam so oh, you haven't been in a while adam finished my car it was a back and forth thing we mm -hmm. touched on some things upgraded some things after the motor was built yeah. um but the last time i was by adam was probably august september okay so. yeah i got a 91 mr2 turbo project but okay. uh, we just got the k24a2 oh, and he's gonna cool. fab up a 64 millimeter turbo no kit precisely and take it to the drag strip welds oh, yeah. in the back and everything that's sick yeah so hopefully world cup car in a couple of years but very cool yeah all right man well let's go go ahead and get inside here we're gonna make an appointment and uh we'll be up here next week to get the uh, the mm3 and get the trans and the and the engine tuned and then after that we'll, we'll go to the transmission stuff and, and max out the uh the stock setup i guess right have some fun cool all right man well we appreciate it thanks for being on video it's awesome and uh see you guys later all right y'all I got, a, I got a punch in GPS. I got all turned around here. <laughs> Let's see. I need to go home. Take me home. At end of the road, turn left onto North Prospect Street. All right, guys. Uh, I got literally just a couple minutes left of battery on this thing, but um, I just want to say I, I'm super pumped, especially after taking rides with. Uh, with Tim and Nick, really appreciate those guys taking me out in the two shop trucks. Um, you know, the, the two test mules, I guess uh, the second one that the compound turbo setup was actually uh, Nick's truck now, but either way, it was super nice of them to uh, give me a tour, appreciate it. Uh, can't wait to go back up next week. Um, we set the appointment for next Tuesday afternoon. I can just go up on my lunch and it sounds like it'll just take a couple hours to uh, load up the software um, and uh, you know verify everything's working okay etc so hope you guys are psyched um, I did this for you guys uh, honestly was not planning on doing anything to this truck but um, just based on the fact that the Rams got uh, so much positive attention so far and you guys seem to like it a lot and I'm picking up a lot of new subscribers and a lot of a lot of new folks in general so the road. turn left 
Sorry about that. I'm just going to keep going with it. So uh, next up, like we said, next week is the uh, the tune of the engine and the transmission. And then after that, we can look at beefing up the, uh, the transmission a little bit. But uh, if you guys like stuff like this and you want to keep seeing more Ram content, make sure you smash that like button. And uh, you're subscribing, got the bell turned on, all that good stuff. So I'm going to let you all run. I will launch this video today, which is a Thursday. So um, plan on checking in probably with you over the weekend, maybe on Sunday so or Saturday possibly. But uh, big things coming up next week in general too. Um, on top of this, we got the, uh, the Evos going in on Monday. So get excited and uh, appreciate you guys and we'll check back in. Peace.